Hey everybody, welcome back to another Krita tutorial video. Today we're just going to go over some changes and um, new features within Krita for 4.4.2. The simple stuff I'll start with. Uh, first up here is the wraparound mode. A long time ago, Krita would um, let me break this up here. Had the wraparound mode where you hit W and you can make a tiled um, image and see it in real time. So I'm gonna make this here and I can line it up and it's seamless, right? The problem was a lot of new users were hitting the W key by mistake and kind of freaking out <laughs> about what it was. So they took that default W key off and you would have to go and enable it yourself. The only problem with that was then everybody wasn't sure where that was or how to activate that easily and they'd have to go back and edit the hotkeys and you know whatever so to make it easy on new users um, you can hit this icon here it'll turn the wraparound mode on so just to show so we can just go ahead and connect it and to turn it off just this button right here so if you accidentally have your wraparound mode on, just turn that button off and you can turn it the wraparound mode off. Another uh, change, which is not super big, but uh, the pop-up palette, I believe for their Summer of Code, someone um, cleaned up the image, the, the rendering of the displays and stuff. So it should be much clearer if you go on the Krita website with the updates and stuff, it actually shows the before and after, and I guess this was way... It wasn't very clean. I honestly never noticed, but I don't think I use the pop-up palette that much for color, so I probably never really noticed. But everything looks good. They also have this here, which is clear colors, which is new. So if you have a bunch of colors that you recently selected, so we'll just start picking some stuff here. And you right click all those four colors that I just used will appear on the outer circle. And if those colors um, are old or you're not using them or you close the file and then start a new one and you want to start fresh, you can just hit clear colors, which I thought was pretty nice. We also have a new transform mode. So I'm going to just... Just using my mouse real quick here. These are like 80s colors or something. I don't know. <laughs> do, do, do. Alright, so here's a box. Okay. So if I go to trip, actually, let me put this in a different layer. There we go. So if we click this button here, turn this layer off. When you have the transform on, whatever is in that layer will be automatically selected to transform, right? And you can go ahead and scale it, do all that fun stuff, rotate it, cool, sheer, fun stuff. Under tool options, if you go all the way to the far right, you can now do a mesh. And what this is going to do is give you controls to distort this um, in a way that has more control if you're trying to match a shape to something like um, maybe patterns for clothing uh, backgrounds like trees buildings all that fun stuff you have more control over that now this would be really good actually for photo editing or for bring a photo in just to, to even reference you can go ahead and start mes messing with the, the mesh controls and you can really tweak it to match whatever um, point in your image you need. So I'm going to undo this real quick. Do, do, do. And you can change the number of columns you have and the number of rows, which is similar to um, is it the grid. Yeah. The, what is this called? The warp. I can subdivide it more often. Now, obviously, it is different because you can see the warp here is warping it. It's not it's not treating it like a mesh and stuff. 
So it, it ruins the whole thing. You can see how on the left hand side, the more I pull this or squish it, the more it affects the whole shape. Whereas here, if you put two, it's only affecting this one area. So if this had um, more content here, it would only affect that. So you can actually go ahead and make really fun shapes with this too. I don't know what this is, <laughs> but you get the idea. So you get more control over your transform and it it's, works pretty fast for me. Um, I don't have any delay. I'm sure if you're using like a super fancy high res image, there could be but at this time I'm not experiencing that. So we're just gonna undo that. Another feature that they've added is under the fill layers. We have gradient now. So you can now change the gradient colors, the type of gradient it is which is nice, it's all in one little window here. We can go to segment or stop, so we don't have to sit here and choose different presets. Um, so the stop is going to be like kind of harsher. Let me see if I can zoom out. Okay, so for the fill layer. Now when you make a fill layer, it is gonna make you a brand new layer, just so you know. So we can add some, we're going to change these colors real quick. Add the blue. There we go. Can't make that. Oh, we can't make that smaller. Okay. Um, so let's see. Around. Change the opacity here. Can reverse it all that fun stuff that we were doing before you can also change the shape of it so we can do that spiral you can choose like basically every gradient setting you have so it's all there <laughs> we also have some new brushes let me move this up Let's see if i can find them in here Ah, here we go. So they're using the RGBA, the alpha aspect, in the Krita brush creation. So, let's see, what is this called? We got thick dry, paint, rake. So basically the transparency, ooh, look at that. This is really nice. The alpha is kind of, it's just empty space. <laughs> And like the watercolor brushes, Ramon, oh no, I forget his last name, but Ramon made them. Um, he is a traditional painter as well, so this is why these look so cool <laughs> and lifelike. This is really neat. Oh, actually, let me try the paint here. Oh, look at that. Really cool. Actually, let me see. Oh, okay. Right. I was curious if it was like... I notice if I move, drag the mouse, it's a pretty straight line, but that's just how the pattern goes. So we have a lot of really neat new brushes again to play with. What is this one called? Rock. Alright, I'm gonna not try to get super crazy with this, but this is still pretty. Let me see what the eraser does. Oh wow, that's really nice too. Um, I would recommend playing with these new brushes. They're really neat. Very artistic. And the last but not least is the mesh gradient. So in order for this to work, you need to be on a vector layer. So if you don't know how to make that, you can go down to this plus icon in your layers docker and go to vector layer. So it's going to make a new layer and it's going to have a different shape icon here. So this is like a paint 
or a drawing type thing, and this has got points, and it says vector layer. So we're going to go to just make a basic shape. I'm going to make sure the brush size is down. I'm just going to make that. I'm going to go to my selector here. I'm going to go to this, make sure I have a border, not that it matters. I'm going to go to the fill option and you can see the gradient. So now I can adjust the gradient in the convert path. Oh, here we go. So just like and we do the radial and we can do the actually click on that. that. And this little point is going to control the, where the gradient is. So we need to delete. Oops. I'll delete that one. There we go. Now you can see the radial gradient. So we're kind of stretching this out a little. Not perfect, but linear. So I can control that here. It's a little slow for me, but it's not bad. So the neat thing about that, so let's say I like that gradient, right? I can go here and I can start messing with the mesh and the gradient's not gonna, it'll resize what, what I'm doing, but it's not gonna change the direction of the mesh, but it will still kind of react to the changes I make. Which is kinda neat, actually you can make, ooh, you can make like a basic sunset or something here. Looks like a shiny floor. So let's see. That's pretty neat. I don't know. <laughs> you can make like a sunset thing. You probably even actually make, uh, paste this into a new vector layer. Oops. Copy new vector layer, paste that there, and we'll convert this to a paint layer. Close that. We'll just do that. So now. I'm just kind of blend this together. It's got an interesting sort of gradient already. Not perfect, but you, you get the gist, right? This has got a nice little horizon here now. Actually, that's not straight. That's going to bother me. We need to fix that. There we go. I'll just bring that up. And this we can just stretch that out. But yeah, you get the idea. You can, you can do some cool stuff with that. Um, speed your progress along and all that fun stuff. So yeah, those, those are just some of the new features in Krita that really stood out to me. There are a lot of bug fixes, a lot of minor things that were changed. I think um, the dots fill layer, I believe it is, was updated. Um, they just, I guess it wasn't working right or something, so they, they um, tweaked it. So it works a little better. Like I said, tons of bug fixes. 
and I believe the Android version of Krita is more stable now. You can start opening files directly from the phone, I believe it was. I'll have to look at it again, but I think I might try that out soon. Um, it seems to be more stable than the previous release, so I'm excited to try that. If it's still kind of buggy, I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to talk about it though. Um, it is something that they've been, they've been working on for a while though, and I think they've made a lot of progress in the past year or so. So yeah, those are the new features in Krita 4.4.2. Um, if there's something I missed, which there probably is, let me know in the comments below if you want me to try and make a video on it. Um, if you like the new changes, let me know and let me know what your favorite feature is. And yeah, as always, if you have any questions or anything else creator related or even just in general, I'll try my best to answer, the, answer them in the comments below or I might be able to make a video on it if it's something I haven't done before. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you like this content because I will obviously be making more videos as um, more features roll out with Greta. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.